This is me Abriti from How to Electronics. In previous video, I explained how you can get started with Amazon AWS IoT Core using ESP32. We published and subscribed data to and from AWS dashboard. But this time, this is completely a different tutorial. Instead of ESP32, we will use AWS IoT Core with ESP8266. The ESP32 code doesn't work for ESP8266. Therefore, so many modifications are required in order to use the similar code. And we will loop all those modified code as well. In this tutorial, we will learn how you can connect NodeMCU ESP8266 with AWS IoT Core. For a demo, we will use DHT11 humidity and temperature sensor and read the humidity temperature data. The ESP8266 will connect to local Wi-Fi network and will post the DHT11 sensor data to AWS IoT Cloud. Not only posting, but we can also receive the data from AWS dashboard. This tutorial comprises multiple sections. Signing up and setting the Amazon Web Services, installing necessary libraries to Arduino IDE, and writing an Arduino sketch for the project, creating a thing in AWS, creating policy and attaching to thing, generating certificates, modifying Arduino sketch according to thing data and credentials, subscription and publish data to and from AWS dashboard. This tutorial is a tutorial for beginners who want to learn about Amazon AWS ID Core for IoT applications. So without getting any delay, let's get started. Do you want professional PCVs like this one that looks so good? Then use the service of Next PCV. You can select the board size, any soldier mask color that you want, including something like red and green. You can select the thickness, and the PCV could be from 2 up to 20 layer for more complex design. The finish quality is so good, and if you want better connectivity, you could also select some gold finish for the pads. The ordering process is so easy, just go to the next PCV.com, then cut now. Insert your design settings, upload your Gorver files, and order now, and then receive the PCV in a couple of days. Welcome back again. The hardware required for this project is a NodeMCU ESP8266 Wi-Fi module. Here I am using a Lolin ESP8266 12V board. You can use any other version. And for the sensor part, we will use DHT11 humidity and temperature sensor. Connect the DHT11 sensor to NodeMCU ESP8266 board as per circuit diagram here. And you can use a breadboard for connection or simply use a male to female connector wire. Now let's see the code for this project. We will use a DHT library and retrieve the humidity and temperature data from the DHT11 sensor. We will also need Wi-Fi client secure library, PopSub client library, the Arduino JSON library, and a time library for reading some time value. And the link for all these libraries is on our website article. Then we have a separate header file here called as secrets.h. This contains all the credentials and informations related to AWS and we will modify this file after setting up the AWS thing. Now go to the AWS console window. Click on IoT Core. So AWS IoT dashboard will appear now. On the left side of the dashboard, there are so many options, but we need to work with two options here. One is the Manage option and the other is the Secure option. Under Manage option, click on Things. Now we need to create a thing here. So click on Create Things. Then select create a single thing, then click on next. Here we need to specify the thing properties. First give a thing name. You can name it anything like ESP8266. Under additional configurations, there is no need to make any changes. Under the device shadow option, select the first option as no shadow, then click on next. Now you need to configure device certificate. So here you can auto generate new certificate which is recommended by AWS. Then click on next. Now we need to attach a policy to the things we created, but no policies are here right now. So we need to create a policy first. So click on create policy. Here give any name like ESP8266 underscore policy. Now the I statement part is very important. Under the action type IoT. So multiple options will pop up. From here we will only need publish, subscribe, connect and receive. First select the IoT connect option. In the resource ARN, replace the last section with the client ID. Give any name to the client ID, for example, ESP8266. 
under effect select all of again add another statement this time select iot publish in the resource arn replace the last section with the topic that you assigned in the code and it is assigned as esp8266 slash pub so i will replace it with the same and under effect again select allow add third statement again this time select iot subscribe in the resource arn replace the last section with the topic that you assigned in the code and it is assigned as ESP8266 slash solve. So I will replace it with the same. And under effect, again select allow. Add fourth statement now. This time select IT receive. In the resource ARN, replace the last section with a topic similar to the subscription. So I will replace with the same subscription topic. And under effect, again select allow. Now click on create to create the policy. So the policy has been created successfully. Now go back to create thing option. So a policy option appeared here as well. We need to attach a policies to the certificate. So select this policy and click on create thing. Now we need to download all these certificates from here. First download the device certificate and then rename it as a device certificate for identification. Also download the public key and rename it as a public key. Then download the private key and rename it as a private key. In the root CA certificates, we have two certificates here. But we just need root CA1 certificate. So download it as well. So we have downloaded all the certificates that we need for our project. Now click on done. So we have successfully created a thing as well as a certificate. Here is a thing named as ESP8266. To view your certificate, go to the certificate section. And to see the policy, go to the policies section. Now it's time to modify the code. Go to secrets.h tab and let's begin the modification. Under the Wi-Fi SSID and password, enter the Wi-Fi SSID and password. Here we need to include a thing name. Now we need to insert the AWS IoT endpoint here. To get that, go to the settings part of AWS dashboard. So here is the device data endpoint. Click here and copy. Then go back to Arduino IDE and paste it here. You need to insert the Amazon root CA1 here. So for this, we need to go back to the certificate that we have downloaded earlier. So open this file with Notepad++ and copy all the text. Then go back to Arduino IDE and insert the copy text between begin certificate and the end certificate. Under these lines, we need to paste the device certificate text. So open the device certificate file that we have downloaded earlier. And again copy the text and paste it between the begin certificate and end certificate section. Under this part, we need to insert the device private key. So go to the downloaded folder again and open the device private key file using Notepad++. Again copy the text and paste it here. So modification of the Arduino sketch is done now. Now go to tools. Select Node MCU 1.0 board that you are using for this project. Select the COM port, then click on Upload option. Once the code uploading is done, open the serial monitor. The ESP8266 will try connecting to the Wi-Fi network, and once it gets connected to the Wi-Fi network, it will try connecting to the AWS IT server. You can see now, the humidity and temperature value is displayed on the serial monitor. The same things should also be posted to the AWS server. To check that, Go to the test section of AWS dashboard. Under the test section, we have an option for subscribe and publish. Now to see the data, first copy the publish topic from the code and paste it here. Then click on subscribe. When you hit the subscribe button, immediately the data from ESP8266 can be seen here. And this data is updated here after an interval of every 5 seconds. This is really amazing as we are able to receive the data published from ESP8266 through MQTT protocol. Now let's see if we are able to publish the data from AWS IT Core to ESP8266 or not. For this, you need to again change the topic and replace it with the same topic that you kept in the code. Then click on publish. Immediately you can see the message has been sent to the serial monitor. You can try again. So. This is my message and I hit the publish button. The message is sent again. 
So this is how you can send or receive data from AWS IT Core using ESP8266. This is a basic beginner's tutorial for the users who want to get started with Amazon Web Service for their IoT device. More videos related to Amazon Web Service are coming soon, so please don't forget to subscribe our channel. Thank you so much for watching.